Welcome to Hands-On Python for Finance. My name is Matt McCarty, and I've been teaching graduate and undergraduate students for over 15 years in business schools, including Bentley and Babson. And I've taught courses on topics like statistics, quantitative methods, information systems, and yes, programming. This course, we're going to focus on programming. We're going to be using the Python programming language. So let's take a look at what you're going to learn in this course. So we're going to start off with a section I'm calling the Python Primer, and that's going to either give you a refresher on Python, or if you're new to Python, it's going to get you up to speed with what you need to know for this course. It's not meant to be a comprehensive Python course itself, but it will get you through the basics so that you can continue on and complete this course successfully. Next, we're going to take a look at the third party libraries that are useful for this course. And those include NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and a few others that we'll see as we go along. Section three, we're going to start off with the finance topics and we're going to be talking about the time value of money. In that section, we're going to build our first little application. Continuing on to the fourth section, we're going to look at time series data. So we're going to use this and see how to forecast things like stock prices. And we're going to get to our second application in section four. Next up, we'll take a look at linear models and correlation. And we're going to use these kinds of modeling techniques to design a portfolio using the idea of the efficient frontier. And then finally, we're going to wrap up by taking a look at Monte Carlo simulation. And here we'll build our final application, a Monte Carlo simulator that will allow us to simulate portfolio ending values, allow us to calculate value at risk. So what are you going to need before you get started? It's going to be helpful to have a basic understanding of statistic, like what I mean by words like mean and standard deviation or percentile. And then it's also going to be useful if you know financial terms. I will define things as I go along, but it's nice to have a little bit of a background in these things so you have more context. So with that preamble, let's go ahead and get started on section one with our Python primer. This course is designed for each section to build on the previous, so it's recommended that you go through them in order.